Hi there, this is Mark Hillian. Welcome to my YouTube channel where we're always learning. And this week we're learning about something wicked, fully wicked, bowls, meditational bowls, Tibetan bowls, singing bowls, yoga bowls, new age bowls, standing bowls, sitting bowls, not that last one really. These are them. These are my friends. And we are going to take a quick look at how to make music out of these guys. But first, a little bit about history of these guys. They are basically from the Bell family. No big surprise if you turn that upside down and take a look at it. That's kind of a bell. Um, bells go back some 5,000 years and were first made in China, it is believed, out of copper and developed basically later into bronze, which is a combination of copper and tin. But to this day, bowls are still basically made the same way out of the same materials. And it's only around the 1950s when China invaded Tibet um, that you started seeing these things coming into the sort of presence of the, the modern world. Um, you know, they become hugely popular, of course, and still to this day you find bowls coming out of Tibet and Nepal that are, you know, three, four, five hundred years old, antique bowls that are um, very expensive, but sound fantastic. Um, but these ones that they make cheaply now sound pretty, pretty damn good too. So you don't need to spend, you know, three, four thousand, five thousand dollars on a, on a, on an antique bowl. The historical evidence of these things is, um, strangely enough, very scant. We, um, in terms of how music is made with bowls, of course, bowls have been around forever. People drink eat soup, you know, measure grain, whatever bowls have been part of human existence for since the adult. But in terms of music making with bowls, we don't really have a lot of evidence. Uh, you don't see pictures of people from a thousand years ago playing bowls. But um, there might be a reason for that. One is that it was bowls were always somehow connected with spirituality or religion still today. Um, and so most bowls that were played um, were played by Tibetan monks or, you know, some kinds of spiritual figures. Um, and so that was a very insular thing. They didn't really get together and have jam sessions on a Sunday night. Um, but I think maybe the other reason is also bowls are not, they don't play very nicely with other instruments. It's hard to find a bowl that is tuned exactly. It's, it's hard to tune a bowl when, when you're making it. And so if you go into a shop and try and buy a bowl that's in, you know, that's, a, that's an E, um, well, good luck. You may look at 10 or 15 of them before you find one that's actually E and not 20 cents above or 20 cents below or whatever. Um, I spent some time trying to curate this little set. Um, and so, you know, bowls, I think, have always been a very individual experience when it comes to music making. Okay, so more importantly, let's get to the music. That's what we're here for. How can you use these things musically in your compositions? Um, they are... There's basically two ways of making a sound with them. You either hit them or you vibrate them, which is by um, rubbing them gently on the outside. Now, hitting them is easy. You hit them with, this is what you're generally gonna have come with your bowl if you buy one, um, just wood and felt cover on that side. And so, um, let's demonstrate. Now, you can hit it with the other side, the felt side. Softer sound. You can hit it with uh, rubber mallets. Look at those guys, they're just basically covered with rubber. Um, you can hit it with brushes, you know, just regular brushes that you find in a drum kit. You can hit it with, well, anything you like. Here is a very soft rubber mallet. And another cool thing you can do is play these guys with your fingers. Oh, 
Well, that's what I love about this is when all those bowls are working together, they're not tuned properly and there's all this wading going on with the frequencies and it's, it's just a really beautiful sound. Now for the vibrating part, which, um, you know, you've got to rub the edge of the bowl um, and it's best to do it with the wood side of this. Um, so you put it against the end quite lightly, but with a solid constant pressure and you just keep turning and turning until that happens. And you can do it with most of them. You can even do it with the big one, <clears throat> which is a bit harder and it needs its own special kind of rubbing device. So you'll probably notice that the pitching is a little bit all over what I've got going on here. I've got two sets of bowls. This set here, which is basically tuned to a D Dorian, including the, the large bowl. This set here, which is basically tuned to a B Dorian. And this one, which is in the middle of fucking nowhere. It's halfway between C sharp and D. Practically not usable with the others. But um, doesn't mean you can't have fun with it on your own. So let me just demonstrate quickly. So here is the D. That's your main D. And here are two Ds. A little bit detuned. And a F and a G. And then on this side we have an A. So nice, um, nice set there. And then on this side we have the B minor, um, which uh, I can't use this with because this is a D. So that's nice too on its own. And so yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do with these guys. Um, super fun. I'd like to play two examples where I've used this in, in uh, a track. One is where I just hit it just to open a track. Um, there's nothing much to it. It's called Pegasus. It's from my um, Los Ancianos album. <clears throat> Let me just uh, play that for you right now. Okay, and the other one is from I in the Sky uh, soundtrack. Um, it's called We're Going Again. I in the Sky stars Helen Mirren and uh, Alan Rickman. And here I am doing doing the rubbing thing with it. You can even hear the, you know, the crunchy parts where the wood hits the side and doesn't quite connect properly. And used to to nice effect in this. I think it's a very unsettling kind of weird kind of pad sound. So take a listen to that.
course, you know, the other cool stuff you can do with these bowls is you can manipulate them. You can put them in your sampler. You know, you can record yourself rubbing it or whatever. Um, you know, maybe do that two or three different times and then layer those all over one another. Change the pitch if you like. Reverse them. Do whatever you like. You can be really creative um, and come up with all sorts of weird things. Even just hitting these things and, and taking that down an octave uh, or even more it really sounds like a big big bell or something like that so there's a lot of creative cool stuff you can do with these guys um you know plus you can also have a little afternoon tea okay so i hope you've enjoyed this week's episode on tibetan bowls um i highly recommend you go and find some of these pick some up on ebay or something you can find them like 10 bucks 20 bucks on ebay or on uh, craigslist or whatever um and uh you know just have fun and see what you come up with um, and please subscribe and please like and please share and please tell your friends about this channel and leave comments below. Um, I love to hear about uh, whatever you guys are finding with these instruments or whatever you guys do with these instruments. Um, so I will catch you next week and don't ever stop learning. Hi there, this is Mark Killian. 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 T. Chai, the pinch of cardamom, and ground clove, sugar and milk. Booyakasha. You fucking bluxum, you bluxum. Bluxum! It's the battery. It's a battery thing. Ach no, man. Yes, sis. Just not there? You just said that. Do us. Do us. Oh, what a do us. Fucking do us. Brief note of his in here. No, just the. I am going to clap and clap again. Okay, so let's have a look at my balls. Uh, that's not even funny. Oh, blithering idiot. <laughs> Fucking puss. <sighs> Fuck it, dude. Let's go bowling. Let's try that again. Ugh. Rambling, rambling, rambling. Let me just start again because I'm fucking just fucking fuck. <laughs>